What is an electron? An electron is a positively charged particle. What? Electrons aren't positively charged. I'm sorry. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. That's a positron. <laughs> sorry. What, what is an electron? Electron is a negatively charged particle. And it is enormously important in chemistry. You can make electrons quite easily if you take a light bulb like this and put it into a vacuum well, break the glass and then put it in the vacuum. If you heat up the um, filament, just like switching on the light bulb, then electrons will come off it. And so they're not difficult to make. And they were first made or first observed by um, the famous physicist J.J. Thompson in um, the end of the 19th century, I think maybe in 1897. Mendeleev didn't believe in electrons. He thought atoms were solid and you couldn't break them and weren't made up of anything else. And he believed this till he died in 1907. But electrons are f enormously important for chemists, far more important than protons, because protons and the nucleus are important, but we don't talk about it every day. But we define a bond between two atoms in terms of pairs of electrons being shared between them. And if there's only one electron, we then say there's half a bond. And so whenever you hear a lecture by chemists, they will talk about transfer of electrons, the electronic state, how the electrons are changed, arranged in atoms. And so it's absolutely fundamental. When I teach the students in their first week of coming to university, I tell them about electrons, how they behave in atoms. And they find this is very hard because electrons, if you treat them one way, behave just like a particle. An electron is something, a negative charge, that can be transferred between one atom and another. For example, when you make sodium chloride, the electron can be transferred from the sodium atom to the chlorine atom to make a sodium positive ion and a chloride negative ion. So it's something that can just be exchanged, rather like changing money. But on the other hand, if you want to understand the structure of the atom, then you have to treat the electron as a wave. And students very often get very muddled by this idea that something can be both a solid part, behave as if it's a solid particle, and at the same time can behave as a wave. And it is a difficult idea to understand, but it's a very important one because it lies at the heart of the structure of the atom, the structure of the whole world that we, as we know it. And so it is up to people at university like me and my colleagues in, physis in physics to try and explain to the students how we understand it. Can you explain it to me? <laughs> or am I not clever enough? I mean, you, do you understand it? You say it gets muddled the students get muddled by it. Do you ever get muddled by it? Or, or have you got your head around it now? Well, I think I mean, the problem is that you have to explain the thing mathematically. And as soon as you go into the maths, the difficulty is that unless people are very good mathematicians, and I'm not, it's not very clear what the equations mean. So you then have to use analogies and say, well, it is like a vibrating guitar string or it's like the waves on a pond and things like that. And sometimes, although the person talking about them think that's a really good explanation, to the some person who's hearing it, it does sound a bit strange. And one of the things which I think perhaps students find particularly difficult is that when you're treating the electron as a wave, you can't really talk about it being there or there or there, because a wave is everywhere in the volume that you're um, considering. And therefore, the idea that everything is very delocalized is difficult for people to understand. But in day-to-day -day conversation, most of the time, when chemists talk about reactions and so on, they really talk about electrons as if they're particles. They don't say, 
I'm now going to treat it as a particle, but they say there is donation of this electron or whatever. So, but on the other hand, whenever they start doing calculations about atoms, then they do have to treat them as waves. One thing I always thought, this is something I always thought for a long time, and in the last six months I'm not thinking anymore. Tell me if I'm right. I always thought I understood the particle wave duality insofar as maybe photons and electrons are simply particles, like little bits, but travelling with a wave-like motion. That's not the case, is it? That's, it's not the case of a particle that's moving in a wave-like motion. When they say they do both, they're doing two completely different things. Yes, well, it's... I think... It's not the way it's travelling, but it, that it actually behaves as a wave. And, I'm, I'm, look, I'm not a specialist in this area, but I think one of the difficulties is that you cannot imagine um, particles very easily um, in terms of everyday life, because um, one of the physicists was talking about these books about um, Mr. Tompkins, where physical constants were changed. So, for example, the speed of light was very slow. And the favourite thing that I like is that Mr. Tompkins goes hunting in this world where the speed of light is very slow. And the only way he can shoot the deer in the forest is to shoot almost at random because he doesn't know where the deer is going to be because the de deer behaves like a wave going through among the trees of the forest. So it doesn't really matter where he shoots, he might strike lucky. No, well, I mean, some people hunt like that anyway. But <clears throat> I think that um, the difficulty, or perhaps we should say the difference between the photon, which carries light, and the electron, is that the electron has mass. And so the electron cannot travel at the speed of light because as you accelerate it towards the speed of light, it gets heavier and heavier. This is a consequence of relativity. And the closer it goes to the speed of light, the heavier it gets. And so it can never go quite at the speed of light. It can go at 99.999% of the speed of light. The photon, on the other hand, has no mass. The mass is zero. And therefore, there isn't a problem because the mass doesn't increase, and that's why photons can travel at the speed of light. OK. You happy? I'm happy. What about you?